Dennis will learn why it's so important to eliminate limiting beliefs in their team members. And it all starts with the hiring process. The Dental Brief is brought to you by Omni Premier Marketing and the amazing guests who bring wisdom and advice that you can put to use to take your business and practices to the next level. Find us on Facebook and join the conversation. Get ready to grow because we are kicking off the next episode in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. Uh, today, I'm so pleased to have with us on the program, awesome coach, uh, mentor, uh, someone who's going to give us so much uh, time and value today. I'm excited for that. Uh, Tracy Savek, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. Hey, it's, I just want to make sure I've got your name pronounced correctly. It is Tracy and it is Civic, like the car, right? Correct. Awesome. Yes. Thank you for taking the time, like I said before. So glad to have you here. Let's jump right in. Tell us how you got involved in the world of, of coaching dentists and, and coaching uh, leaders in the dental industry. Well, you know, Patrick, people ask me that all the time, and I wish I had some exciting, fun story. I don't. Uh, like many people, dentistry kind of found me, and then I never left. I had a friend who needed some help in her dental office while another team member was out on maternity leave. And over a decade later, we're still here. So you've got practice experience, correct? Yes, over 20 and years. Tell me a little bit about the roles that you had with inside of uh, practices. I have actually held every single non-licensed role in a dental practice. That's amazing. So and everything from, uh, I started off answering phones, moved up to treatment coordinator, um, AR management, and then um, right before I went into business for myself was managing a large DSO with 27 regional offices. That's awesome. That's that's great. Yeah. I, I got to ask you this. So we're going to talk about, you're going to talk about limiting beliefs today and reaching yes. goals. But I want to kind of open up a dialogue here a little bit that's a little different. Um, I think most of our listeners are trying to grow their practices. Um, hopefully most listeners are trying to grow their lives. I think this is what this show supports more. Um, sure. It's like life growth, not just practice growth. So success can look very different to everybody, correct? I mean, there is no right and wrong to how someone defines success. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. So I I know I talk to dentists all the time, and a lot of times when they first talk to us, dentists very much so, or when I first speak with dentists, they like, yeah, I want to hit this number and this number and this number. And then sometimes things in life changes where that number changes from dollar signs to days in the office, right, to uh, net revenue per patient and, and things like that. So I just want to kind of open up the dialogue based on that. I know you're going to talk about limiting beliefs, but hitting numbers doesn't necessarily mean that number has to be financially related. You agree with that? 1000% hit the nail awesome. on the head. When I have a prospective new client call me, yep. it's always a, a dental practice owner. And I have a very specific interview process because the very first thing I need to uncover is, are they a dentist who happens to own a business or are they a business owner that happens to be a dentist? Right. And as soon as you purchase your practice and you go into business for yourself, you're no longer a dentist first you are a business owner first. So you're a business owner that happens to be a dentist. However, most of the practice owners will say, gosh, I just, I just want to practice dentistry and get back, get in the operatory, but all my time is filled with all this business stuff. Well, sure. Regardless of what your motivation is, whether it is financial success, helping and growing the community through your dental practice, whatever your motivation is, you're not going to get there until you realize that you are a business owner. Unfortunately, they don't teach those business ownership skills in um, dental school. They, I believe they have now seven hours of business training and it's all kind of how to write your loan application to get approved by the bank. So, um, so that's the first thing that I do is try to, uh, kind of unwrap their mindset around what they're truly doing. Yep. I like to talk about uh, business school and dental school a little bit. And I always tell people all the time, like there's literally no trade outside of business schools, right? Besides getting like a, a degree in business or an MBA or something like that, that does teach business in school. So it's not, you know, physicians aren't going to 
business school in medical school, right? Architects aren't being taught business. Lawyers aren't being taught businesses. There is really no such thing as any highly um, educated, skill, skilled person that is actually getting that business training. So this isn't unique um, to dentistry. But what I do think happens is um, and I think this happens in dentistry because it is, it might be out of all of the highly educated, skilled professions out there. It might be the one that has, and I don't know this. I don't know this as a fact. I just think this. It might be the one that has the highest amount of ownership, independent ownership amongst um, these people, right? Yeah. Maybe, right? It kind of feels that way. But I guess what I'm kind of getting at right here is it's just because you didn't go to business school doesn't mean that you have an excuse to not be great at running a business. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. As soon as you hire your first team member, you have a fiduciary responsibility to, to grow in that area because now you have other people relying on you. Yeah, you're, you're leading other people. So let me ask you this question. When people are calling you, I know you talked a little bit about that process that you walked through, but what are some of the big calls that you're getting right now? Like, Hey, I want to do better in my business, but this is the big thing that's holding me back. This is the the restraint that I feel or that I, I can't come, get over. What is that right now that you're you're hearing and feeling? The majority of the calls from practice owners share one major concern, which is before the the pandemic, everything was flowing smooth. We were in a rhythm. Um, I had some tenured team members who understood why we're doing this. Post pandemic, a lot of team members didn't come back. I have a new team, but it's still the same practice, same patient, same dentistry, same owner. Why does it feel so different? Like there's something off and they hire me to come in and kind of diagnose why it's off. What is the number one reason why it's off? Why do you think it's off? Do you think it's an actual thing or is it just the way we feel? No, I think it's an actual thing. I think it's because those team members, the new team members were trained on the skill and someone can have all the skill in the world, but dentistry is a relational business. And if you don't train them how to manage the human mm. side of the practice, which starts with eliminating limiting beliefs, Yep. then it's not going to feel the same because it's not the same culture. And people get really worried. Like what is this buzzword culture that everyone is hearing? Culture is simply the way that we do things. And if you have trained them on the skill, but not the way that they should carry out those tasks, meaning interacting with patients, presenting treatment and their initial mindset coming into the practice and they don't know your why, that's where it feels off. You're not connected. They're, they're being transactional, not relational. So sure. I take teams from being transactional to being relational in a way that matches the practice owner's mission and vision, their why. Makes sense to me. I was at a restaurant Monday. Today's it's a Wednesday. Feels like, feels like it's a Friday, but it's a Wednesday. And um, <laughs> met, a, met a, a friend uh, for lunch um, downtown Denver. And the service was just horrible. It was just a, a terrible, I shouldn't say it was a terrible experience, but it definitely didn't feel like any person there wanted to be there. It didn't feel like anyone liked their job or could even pretend that they liked their job for a little bit, right? So right. this is happening. I, ironically, later that day, I listened to a phone call in a practice um, between a potential new patient and um, a uh, person answering the phone in the practice. And it literally sounded the same as our server did in the restaurant. It was almost like it was the same same person, wow. right? same kind of attitude. So, I, you know, I think a lot of things translate. And I think when you're out and about town, look how people interact and go, hey, is my team acting this way? Right? And if, if people aren't happy to see customers, you know, like I always say, if you stop answering the phone, maybe they'll stop calling, right? It'll kind of take care of itself. So give me some actionable steps that we can like kind of pump things up a little bit in our practices that we can in our businesses that we can get kind of the team on fire and kind of get some of that passion for serving people back. Absolutely. I love that you used that analogy about a restaurant because I will take dental teams to a five star dining experience. Mm. And before that, I'll ask them, write down what your, your, the best dining experience you've had is. And I'll take them there. And usually, um, you know, some people have experienced it, some people haven't, it's just not their thing, doesn't matter to sure. me. But the whole purpose of that exercise is 
when we walk out of there, how did you feel? Did you feel um, unique and special? And do you, do you feel like they were attentive to your needs? And I'll purposely be um, maybe a little bit, I have two teenage boys. They call it being a Karen. I'm not sure what that term is, but I'll, I'll purposely, you know, go overboard being a little bit needy just to see how the server handles it. And afterwards, right. I, I relate them, them that back to in the dental office, the dentistry, the number one people, why people, the number one reason why people say yes to your dentistry is be how they feel at the practice. Yeah. Patients have no idea the type of dentistry or quality of dentistry that you um, deliver. They don't make those initial phone calls and ask, how many crowns has the doctor done? Um, are there any lawsuits against him? How many years of schooling? Where did, where did he graduate mm. in his class? They don't ask wow. those questions. They ask questions surrounding how they're going to feel at the practice. And if you don't create that feeling, that experience, that emotional connection of making your patients feel safe and secure when they're in your care, they're not going to say yes to your dentistry. And you're right. It all stems from that initial phone call because the level of care and service on that initial call has to match the level of care and service that a patient can expect to receive in your practice. Yep. How do, you know, you've, I, and I apologize to any guest if I'm mistaken about this, any prior guest, if I'm mistaken about this, I think in, uh, I think we've recorded about 200 episodes and you're the first person who has ever asked, I think, and again, I apologize to any of our prior guests if I'm wrong about this, but I, I'm pretty sure you're the first person who has ever mentioned anything like, does the team know who the dentist is? Do they know their background? Do they know their training? Do they know where they're from? Do they even know anything that they like, right? So I, that's critical. If somebody asks that question and they say, I don't know, that's a, I think what that would be a big, big red flag to that person and where, you know, when this does happen all the time, I ask people, you know, where they went to school. And the reason why I ask people where they went to school in that type of an environment, it's just because I'm trying to find some common ground, right? right? So give your patients the ability to find common ground with you. If they're seeking that out and they want to know where you went to school, they probably want to talk about football or maybe they went there. They know somebody that went there. That's what's coming next. So um, awesome, awesome point. Give us another tip. What else can we do? Well, it's funny that you mentioned, um, I keep saying it's funny that you mentioned, but it is because you're right on target. The why behind the practice owner's reason for even going into dentistry. Next mm. is eliminate those limiting beliefs. So what happens is a new employee is hired. They come in, they think their job is to answer the phone and present a treatment plan. Well, let's do an exercise, Patrick. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. And anyone who's listening to this, I want you guys to do this in your minds as well. But how do you spell silk? Uh, S-I-L-K. And I'm a terrible speller, by the way, but S-I-L-K. Oh, it's okay. It's not a trick. And you got it right. But right. if I said, what does S-I-L-K spell, what would you say? Silk. All right. Just tell me one more time. How do you spell silk? S-I-L-K. What is a cow drink? Milk. Okay. So cows don't really drink milk. They drink water, right? Ah, come on. <laughs> yes. This is right. your unconscious mind. I just spoke to your unconscious mind. Our brain has two parts, the unconscious and the conscious. And there's tons of information we could talk about um, right. surrounding this, but I'll keep it super short and just say that our unconscious side is our autopilot side. Right. And it loves to give us answers, but most of the time those answers are not correct. And when you have a patient in front of you or on the phone, they're picking, their unconscious mind is constantly developing their own opinion and feeling based on their interaction with you. So first you have to understand as a, as a dental owner that you need to train your, your team on your why. What is your purpose and your mission? If it's just to, you know, extract teeth all day long for 200 bucks, let your team know that. If it's to save teeth and listen to the patient and and deliver quality care in a partner relational environment, you need to let the team know that because what happens is your team members develop these limiting beliefs mm -hmm. because once you've heard no from a patient for so long, your unconscious brain starts to think that that's the repetitive pattern and your yep. unconscious brain will go on autopilot. And now when you are on the initial phone call and a 
team member hears, do you take my insurance? One out of network practice, if they haven't had success converting those calls, is automatically going to go into the mindset of they're an insurance driven patient and they're not going to schedule this appointment. And that comes through in their tone of voice and the right. delivery on that call. And then fast forward to case presentation. When a patient it, or a, a team member is asked to present treatment to a patient and the team member maybe is living, I don't know, either paycheck to paycheck or living an amazing, fruitful life, regardless, they'll take that limiting money belief and either be make it all about the money and think, wow, this is a lot of money and I'm presenting it to the patient and I don't feel comfortable asking for $10,000. Yep. Or they'll think, oh, $10,000 is a drop in the bucket and right. make the patient feel bad if they can't afford it. So right. I always tell practice owners, you need to train your team that it is not their business how the patient is going to receive the information that we tell them. Our right. job is to deliver amazing, excellent dental care and do it within the budget that they have. If your patients are saying no due to money, then let's get some financing options in there. If your patients right. are saying no because they want to check on their scheduler or check with their spouse, they're giving you an excuse. They haven't bought in. You haven't made them understand the why right. behind the dentistry. So that would be my next suggestion is eliminate those limiting beliefs I've got a checklist of 27 limiting beliefs that happen in a practice every single day from the top down, going through every single department. And when I go through this checklist and I can eliminate these limiting beliefs, such as hygienists that don't want to mention um, that, that minor malocclusion because they don't want to sound like a salesperson, uh, yep. things like that. We, we squash all that and get back to the core reason of why the doctor's there and then rebuild our mindset from that That's point. Hundred percent right. I always like to say it in a retail environment. A lot of dentistry is very retail. It's consumer driven on what people are going to spend money on. And I know people don't like to hear that, but in the minds yeah. of most patients, I tell people all the time, you're not. They're not. You're not competing with another dentist. You're competing with the BMW dealership, right? Or <laughs> Tiffany's or uh -huh. that five star restaurant, right? And so a lot of people forget about that. But don't think for your customer because you don't know. And you also, this I see this happen every time they go to Las Vegas. You can be in the Wynn or Encore, which are arguably the two most expensive, right. nicest casino hotels in Vegas. And you will see somebody in the $50,000 minimum blackjack room who looks like they drove a tractor to the <laughs> casino. Like yes. literally they're wearing overalls and an old flannel shirt and they haven't shaved in 15 years, you know, it, like that. And they're just in there. You don't know. And most people, that person comes into your dental for that same person in their 25 year old Timberland boots you know, or Wolverine boots comes into the practice. You're like, this person can't afford anything. They're not going to buy this. You have no idea. And you also don't know if it's the type of person, yeah, they're on a budget, but their health is the most important thing in the world to them. And they, they're not spending money at the win or on BMWs. They're spending money on things like their Peloton, their uh, supplements, their vitamins, right? Their physical health. And if they think something is connected, to the longevity, physical health, they're going to spend money on it, even if they don't make that much money. So best advice ever, don't don't ever think for the customer, and you're 100% right, don't have these limiting beliefs anywhere in your practice. So fantastic message. Tracy, I'm going to ask you this last question. Um, sure. I know you're a, a coach. Um, I know you're helping practices. Fantastic. Um, obviously, you're on here to share. Um, tell us if somebody is considering, and by the way, let me get to your website out there. It's Team Culture Works. Dot com. So I want our audience, by all means, to, to check it out and feel free to reach out to you. But if, if you were to give advice um, to a dentist as far as here's how you find a great coach, someone to help you with your practice, these types of things, what advice would you give them? How would you go about vetting uh, an expert to help them? That's a great question. I would first make a list of your top three priorities of what you feel you want the end result to look like. Where do you want ch the change to occur? And then vet consultants and coaches, there are a lot out there. Um, a lot of them, and, and most of my friends are coaches and consultants, there are amazing ones out there, but there are also a lot that say that they're the end all be all. It's impossible to be an expert or be great at all things dentistry. There's so many different caveats to it. Sure. So find someone who's an expert 
that in the same exact key areas where your top three priorities are. There are um, insurance coaches, AR management coaches, telephone skills coaches, and then culture coaches like I am. If someone were to call me and say I'm having trouble with a hygienist, they just don't want to take intraoral photos and, and they're not warming the patient up to any diagnosis, I'm going to refer them to my hygiene coach that I have on my team. Um, yep. So really vet them. If they say that they're an expert in all things dentistry, that's not possible. Awesome. I said it was the last question. I'm going to ask you a second question. You got a sure. bookshelf behind you. got a bookshelf behind you. If you could recommend that a dentist, or if they're only going to read one book in their lifetime, what book on that shelf would you ask them to read? Influencer. Influencer. Who, do you remember who that's by? I'll, I'll put, we'll put it on the website. I can never I remember. Off. At my bedside, I'm reading it for like the hundredth time. Um, my favorite book is Influencer, but I will say it's a new book to me. I'm reading it for the second time right now. Um, but prior to that, there's a book by Chris Voss. It's called Never Split the Difference. Mm, people hear yep. the title and they think that it is a book about negotiating to get people to say yes. And it's not. It's about getting into the minds of people and their unconscious brain and how that works and all the, the judgments that they make that they don't even realize. He was actually an FBI hostage negotiator. So he sprinkles yeah. in those stories throughout the book as well. It's amazing. It's called Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Yep. That's an awesome book. I've read it. I, I do recommend it. It's very interesting. It's not what I thought it was going to be when I read it, but it's a an excellent book. Tracy, I want to thank you so much for coming on one more time. Uh, we'll come back to you in a sec. One more time. The website is teamcultureworks.com. Check it out. Tracy, thank you again for your time. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me.